In this note, we're going to summarize our sampling techniques that we looked at in the last note, um, but apply it to a more general um, idea rather than just Skittles. And in our last note, if you remember, we looked at ways of sampling um, from a population, right? The population was the, or all the individuals that we're studying, and a sample is a subset of that population. Um, the reason we want to create a subset or a smaller group is that sometimes uh, studying the entire population is too timely, too costly, and too inconvenient. So we want to try to make a small group that accurately represents our overall population to make it easier on us. Uh, we looked at six overall techniques and we talked about how these techniques can be used or combined together. Um, and they do fall under two categories of either random or non-random. So the first one we looked at was a simple random sample. And in a simple random sample, each member of the population has an equal chance of being chosen or selected. So for example, if I wanted to put numbers in a hat and select students numbers 1, 3, 7, 9, 10, 12, 24, that would be simple random. Everyone has an equal chance of being selected from the hat. Um, the problem is, is that it's not always an accurate representation of the population, right? Because it is random, you may not get an accurate representation of what you're looking at. But again, it does fall under the category of being a random sample. Systematic sample. So this is where every interval or the term nth member of the population is selected. So that means if you're looking at a scenario where you're selecting every fourth or every third every fifth, every seventh, tenth, fourteenth person in your population is selected. And to figure out how you would do this, you would take your population, so the total number of individuals in your population, divided by how many individuals you want in your sample to get your total. So in this case, if I have 24 students in a class, I want to have a sample of six students 24 divided by 6 gives me 4, so that means I'm going to select every fourth student. So that should give me an equal representation of, or a good representation of the entire population. Again, this is considered random because we have no say in who's going to be picked because we're choosing a random interval based on our size of our sample. For, strat for a stratified random sample, the population is broken up into groups. So we break them up into groups depending on maybe gender, age, um, nationality, income level, whatever it happens to be, hair color, whatever you want to do to break your groups up. And then a sample is selected from each subgroup. So if I broke them up into gender, I would select a group from each, the boys and the girls. So selected from each subgroup, and each selection that I'm making is in proportion to, the, to its size in the population. So if there's more individuals in a specific group, then there'd be more individuals selected from that. And the way you do that is just by selecting a certain percentage from each group, but it's the same percentage. So for example, if I have 16 students that are boys, I'm going to select a quarter of them or 25%, and I would end up with four boys. If I did with the same thing with the girls and there's eight of them, I'm gonna select 25% of the girls, and that means I'm selecting two. So the same, number or the same percentage is being selected from each group but because there are more boys in the classroom there's going to be more boys picked so this does give us a very accurate representation in terms of the grouping and this would be a random sample again a voluntary response sample again we talked about this voluntary response it contains 
uh, people or groups who have volunteered or you could call self or self select themselves to take part in in the survey or to take part in or to take or to pretty much complete the survey so this would be something where you are leaving a comment card if you think of YouTube um, and you have the surveys that pop up before a video those are all voluntary responses you don't have to do them whoever does them does them of their own free will um, and this would be non-random because again you could have one group that goes in and only does them um, but again you have no control over who does it so this would be a non-random sample a cluster sample so the cluster sample was similar to the stratified sample and that the population is broken up into clusters and a certain number of clusters are chosen but the difference here so similar if we're breaking it up by gender or by age we're breaking them up into groups or clusters however different from stratified where only a certain percentage was selected here every person of the cluster or every individual of the cluster is part of the sample so if i was to divide it up by age or by grade for example in the school i would select all the grade nines or all the grade tens or all the grade elevens uh, a good example would be if you walk into the cafeteria everyone's sitting at a table they've already broken themselves up into groups and you select two entire tables to be part of your sample a convenient sample is a sample that contains members of the population from which the sample is most easily accessible so this is basically just saying the members of the population of, from which the sample are just easily accessible where I can easily get to them I'm not making it difficult I'm not doing a lot of work um, this could be something as simple as saying if I want to find out information about cell phones I would ask people that walk into um, Rogers or Bell or TELUS right? or if I want to find out information about sports I'm just going to ask people who walk into um, sport check if I want to find information about students at the school I would just ask everyone in my class because those are the easiest people for me to access multi-stage multi-stage we talked about again this is where you take a half and then a half and then a half and it's so that we're dividing the population into into levels and choose a random sample at each level All right so we divide it into half and chose half and then divide that the second half again and choose half from that and divide in half again and choose the half from that so going back up and looking at it, cluster sample was random, convenience sample was not random, and multi-stage is random. So again, when you have more control over who you're selecting, and it's not up to the individuals being selected to kind of influence your choice, that's when you have more of a random and not random sample. So again, this is just a summary of the different types of sampling so again, our idea is to understand them and to know that they fall under two categories. And again, these can be interchangeable or combined um, depending on, again, your time, how much your cost levels and the convenience.